Church. Happy Saturday to you. We're going to be looking again at the Word of God out of the book of Philippians. We're going to finish up chapter number two today, and it's about relationships. I want you to note as I read through this how Paul felt towards two men whom he had ministered to and who he had ministered with, and how they made an impact upon his life, and how we ought to also make an impact upon other people's lives. Chapter 2, verse 19, the Apostle Paul says, But I trust in the Lord Jesus to send Timothy to you shortly, that I also may be encouraged when I know of your state. So I'm going to send Timothy to you to find out how things are going there in Philippi so he can bring back word to me. For I have no one like-minded who will sincerely care for your state. For all seek their own, not the things which are of Christ Jesus, but you know his proven character, that as a son with his father, he served with me in the gospel. Therefore, I hope to send him at once, as soon as I see how it goes with me. But I trust in the Lord that I myself shall also come shortly. Yet I considered it necessary to send to you Epaphroditus, my brother, fellow worker, and fellow soldier, but your messenger and the one who ministered to my need. Since he was longing for you all and was distressed because you had heard that he was sick. For indeed he was sick almost to death, but God had mercy on him, and not only on him, but on me also, lest I should have sorrow upon sorrow. Therefore I send him the more eagerly that when you see him again, you may rejoice, and I may be less sorrowful. Receive him therefore in the Lord, and with all gladness, and hold such men in esteem. Because of the work of Christ, he came close to death, not regarding his life, to supply what was lacking in your service to me. Paul would mention these two men as talking about people who he trusted and who he had ministered with. Paul, uh, he mentions secondly Epaphroditus, but I'm going to mention him first. Epaphroditus was sent by the Philippian church to Paul to check on how Paul was doing. In fact, he brought a love offering because Paul's needs needed to be met. And oftentimes, even when you were in a jail, you had to pay for certain things or you just didn't get them. And so they sent Epaphroditus to check on Paul and to get some information about how things were going there in Philippi. Epaphroditus stayed a while. Eventually, he got sick. He had risked his life to come and to be with Paul and to do the ministry that needed to be done there. And so Paul says, I'm sending him back to you because, number one, he longs to be back with you guys. And number two, his ministry here is done. But I wanted you to be uh, uplifted by the fact that he's coming back because he was sick, as you well know. But now uh, God has raised him up and uh, has delivered him. And then he mentions also Timothy, another young man whom Paul actually had led to the Lord. And he says about Timothy, I don't have anyone else in my life more like-minded to myself than Timothy. I'm like a father to Timothy. In fact, Paul had led Timothy to the Lord, and he had discipled him and helped him in, in ministry, and they had worked side by side. The encouragement here today is this. Our lives need to be poured into others as others pour their lives into us. You know, first of all, our relationship with the Lord is most important. Then with our spouse, and obviously then to our children. And those need to be number one. But every one of us, needs to find someone in our life that we can either be a mentor to or that we can be mentored by. Paul had chosen young Timothy and he had taken him on missionary journeys. He had poured into him and taught him how to share the gospel. He had discipled him. He had helped him to understand the deeper level things. He held him accountable. And now Timothy is working shoulder to shoulder with the Apostle Paul. Find someone in your life, and men, it needs to be another young man, or an older man if you're, or if you're someone that needs to be mentored. Ladies, if you're an older lady and you've been discipled in the things of Christ, find someone that you can mentor. This is the way of the New Testament. I don't believe that we've done that very well in this 20th century, and 21st century now. We, we haven't taken people and just discipled them. Oh, we do our own kids somewhat. But every one of us needs to find at least one, maybe two people that we can uh, say, hey, let me come alongside you and disciple you and teach you and help you. Ladies, particularly the older ladies that have already raised their kids and you're into that grandmother stage now, 
it is vital for you to come alongside some young ladies who are some of them having to work in the workforce and raising kids and just need some help in understanding how to do that in a biblical way. Come alongside them. Mentor them. If you're a young person, find someone you respect and tie your life to theirs and, and see if you can come alongside them and learn from them. Jesus took 12. He's far greater than we are. I, I wouldn't suggest you take 12. Uh, we couldn't do that. But if you can take one or two and disciple them, I know the Lord will bless you for that. So look around and find someone whom you can pour yourself into. Let us pray together. Father, we thank you again that you have called us to Christ and we have our salvation. Now help us to be mindful of others. For those young Christians, I pray that you'll help them to mature in the faith, help them to be discipled. May they come along and be underneath someone who will mentor them. Then for those of us who have been in the faith for some time, help us to mentor others. Father, pour yourself into us so that we can pour ourselves into them and give us wisdom. And we'll give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen.